Moving to New York always sounded appealing to me, and I think it was in large part because my Uncle John was here, and he did Broadway, and um, my aunt also did Broadway. So New York, to me, felt very attainable because of that, whereas I think to some people it seemed out of reach. And I also knew that I wanted to be an artist in some form, so I think the natural progression if you're American especially is like, well, where else do you go? You go to New York City. New York was very unstable for me initially because I had just graduated. I did my last year at FIT. I was a transfer student from the University of Wisconsin Madison in fashion design. And um, I had a lot of trouble initially because I graduated right when the economy was just tanking in New York in like '09. And it was so brutal finding a job in any industry, and the fashion industry wasn't an exception. I think it's going to be amazing because this glows in the dark. Like the glow. Oh, lines. Yes! I still have serious Peter Pan syndrome, I think. Just because as a kid, I like looked at parents and I was like, you really just want to sit and talk to each other? It's so boring. Somebody trapped the wall. That's the floor! Do, do people live here? Should we turn the music down? Your music isn't loud. It's not even loud. That doesn't, if we're renting a studio, that's not even music. No, not at all. And it's barely 9 like, p.m. It's not like 3. Right. I don't want to be an adult ever. And my mom's like, oh, you just wait, honey. Get ready. <laughs> Being a teenager, that was an interesting experience. And it's funny because I think most people sort of mature and wake up and become a person around that time, and I just didn't. I was just still living in Gina bubble land. <laughs> I remember in eighth grade, I used to make these flowers out of pipe cleaners and tissue paper, and I would like wear them in my hair to school, like a la Frida Kahlo. I had, and I had like these like, three inch sparkly platform sketchers and I'd wear like these little like denim cut off dresses and like these crazy printed shirts and then I'd wear these flowers in my hair and cover my face in glitter and I'd go to school like this and I remember my mom apparently she told me this in retrospect that she had a parent teacher conference with my eighth grade English teacher and she's like you know I'm really concerned about Gina I'm, I'm afraid she might be getting like teased because she wears these really ridiculous things to school <laughs> And my English teacher's like, no, actually all the girls in class ask her to make them flowers. <laughs> so this is my bedroom. Um, I have all these like crazy hats too, because I had a, among other weird career options, I had a stint where I wanted to be a haberdasher. And um, so I worked at a hat shop. So like a lot of these, like I made these and the one over there. And then I had a, a phase of like making headdresses, which I still do occasionally. But this is like a really weird one. <laughs> it's like this crazy like mohawk like aviator's cap with flowers of course and sparkly on the inside like a ton of art boxes of art with nothing to do with it sketches like a lot of times I draw from editorial imagery that I really like I love things that have movement in fashion because a lot of it gets so static and boring more editorial. This was from a project that I did, um, was like a series where it was a concept about idolizing youth and beauty in our culture. I see myself. What, what attracted me to fashion when I was younger was that style is the most incredible form of self-expression for me and I think for a lot of people. And it can be this way of really developing an identity, and I think there's so much strength and power in that. When you put on clothing that makes you feel great, you, you really emotionally feel better. Yeah, cat lady. Yeah, cat lady. Hey, fucking yow. Yeah.